अरुणाम करुणा तरंगताक्षी धृत पाशांगुश पुष्पाण चापिरावृता मयूख अहम विभावये भवानी नमस्ते and welcome to the latest episode <laughs> it seems like we're progressing at such a slow pace you know that it's going to take a long time to get through all thousand names but actually each of these names is so deep and has so much significance that it really pays off to take the time to go through them in detail and in the video description below there's a link to the complete commentary so that if you want to go ahead you can nama 127 shri kari shri means all types of prosperity it also means wealth happiness beauty attraction auspiciousness etc since she is the embodiment of all these qualities and also endows her devotees with these qualities she is known as shri kari vishnu sahasranam 611 is shri kara which means giver of wealth to his devotees in fact there is no difference between vishnu and lalitambika Vishnu is also known for auspiciousness etc there is a brother sister relationship between them and Vishnu is elder brother to Lalitambika other namas in this Lalita Sahasranama confirm this 267 Govinda Rupini 298 Narayani 893 Vishnu Rupini etc Shri Kara's sister is Shri Kari. So in Sanskrit Kara means maker. So Shri Kari is feminine for one who makes or creates auspiciousness. So auspiciousness what it, what does it really mean? It means a good future. So all good qualities are increased by one who is auspicious. And this is certainly true of Lalita. Huh? Now a very important and profound point is made in this commentary that she and Vishnu are actually one and the same. And even one of her names is Vishnu Rupini. She is the form of Vishnu. Well, why should this be surprising? She's the form of everything. <laughs> She is form in general. She is the manifestation. So, all of the principal gods and demigods and spirits of various kinds and all the species of life throughout the universe are her. And she is also the infrastructure that makes it all possible matter time energy space and so on all the laws of physics chemistry and whatever so just say she is the designer she is the artist she and her uh, subsidiary shaktis are the ones who create everything and they have quite a sense of humor for example consider the platypus <laughs> and other strange and bizarre animals and birds that we see in nature you know who could think up this kind of thing except someone with a sense of humor and also a very good sense of design and structure if you look into anatomy of any species It's fascinating how it's all put together and especially how it grows from a tiny seed or egg into a mature animal or plant. 
So this is Lalitambika. She creates auspiciousness. She is auspiciousness. And to associate with her as a devotee brings auspiciousness into our lives. Nama 128. Sadvi. She is chaste. Please refer to Nama 709. Sadashiva Pativrata. When someone has huge wealth, he is called Lakshmi Pati, meaning the husband of Lakshmi, Sri Maha Vishnu. Pati is generally used to refer to the husband of a woman. In ancient Sanskrit, Pati was used to mean a good sign, good fortune, prosperity, success, or happiness. Lakshmi resides in the chest of Vishnu. Lalitambika and Shiva are attached to each other so deeply, one without the other cannot even carry out their duties. So Sadvi, meaning chaste, is also the name for a female Sadhu. Huh? Sadhu is the male form, Sadvi is the female form. So this means basically chaste. Chaste implies the existence of a partner to whom one is faithful and devoted. So in the case of the sadhu or sadvi, that partner is God or goddess, ishtadevata, the form of God or goddess to whom one is devoted with great love. So in married life, it has a slightly different meaning. Sadvi means a chaste wife. Now in olden days, actually until maybe 50 years ago in India, the standard in society was that the wife considers the husband as God. And of course, this assumes that the husband has the qualities of God. In other words, he's a Brahmana, someone with the qualities of Brahman. So in modern society now, people are becoming increasingly profane, materialistic, greedy, sinful, and so on. So they hardly deserve this kind of devotion. Huh? In fact, the wife is often now criticizing the husband, even in public. And of course, divorce is going up through the roof. But there's something that you have to see. Uh, I recently came across a map of the world and it showed the incidence of cancer per 100,000 people population in the different countries of the world. And guess which country was number one? The US, followed closely by Canada, UK and so on. And guess which country was last? India. Even in Sri Lanka, there's more cancer than in India. India is absolutely the most cancer-free country. Then just out of curiosity, <laughs> I also looked up the map of meat consumption. And guess what? The first country is the US and the last country is India. Now correlation does not imply causation, but still <laughs> it looks a lot like keeping vegetarian diet also tends to stave off bad karma like cancer. So this is true in general, that a pious lifestyle with Frequent thoughts of God in a devotional mood acts for physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health. So why is this? Because our thoughts create our future. And if we keep good thoughts, beautiful thoughts, thoughts of God or goddess, thoughts of kindness and love and devotion, then our future is auspicious. And if not, if we keep thoughts of greed and lust and avarice 
and hate and so on, that creates a very dark future for us. So this goddess is sadhvi. She's chaste. She's totally devoted to her partner. And this is why it's not a good idea to approach her in a conjugal mood, in an erotic mood. Now, if she approaches you, that's a different story. <laughs> but we should not approach her because she is devoted to Shiva. And unless we have the qualities of Shiva, then it's very inappropriate to try to be with her in conjugal mood. Saundarya Lahari 96 explains this Nama. O oh, foremost among the chaste, how many are the poets who do not court Brahma's wife Saraswati, knowledge. Who does not become the Lord of Lakshmi with only a little riches? But except Shiva, nobody can attain you. The interpreters intend to say that nobody can claim Lalitambika like other gods and goddesses, as she is beyond comparison with them. The problem in that interpretation arises with the Sanskrit word pati, which generally means husband. But there are other meanings for this word, such as master, lord, owner, possessor, etc. Therefore, pati in this context does not mean husband, but refers to a person who owns wealth, who has knowledge and wisdom, or who has mastered the art of speech. This shloka is poetic parlance. Lalitambika is called chaste because she always remains with Shiva. She considers Shiva as Patideva, which means a wife who regards her husband as divine. This is the right explanation for this Nama, as she was created by Shiva, and therefore she considers him as her divine husband. Pativedanaha means Shiva. Vedanaha means perception or knowledge and pativedanaha means possessor of knowledge. So we should understand that one who possesses some opulence, like wealth, beauty, fame, knowledge, power, or even renunciation, should really not consider themselves to be the owner of that opulence. Because in actuality, the goddess alone is the substance of all those opulences. And Shri Kari means that she can, she can make you have these opulences, but in any case, these are just temporary. And we should not identify with them. We should not think that they are mine. Huh? They're simply on loan from the actual creatrix of all wealth, all fame, and all opulence. Nama 129. Sharachchandranibhanana. Her face appears like the moon in autumn season. Sharada means the second half of October, November, and first half of December. In a natural horoscope, each Rashi represents a solar month. Two solar months make a ritu, season, and six ritus make a year. During Shara Dritu, autumn or fall season, the moon appears brighter and without blemishes. Please refer to Nama 133, Niranjana. So now this Nama compares her with the moon in autumn. The moon in autumn is very beautiful. After the hot season, uh, finally the atmosphere becomes cool and clear. And one can see the moon very distinctly. And it's very bright. It appears to be without blemishes, or less blemishes anyway. And she is like this. Uh, she is cool, calm, clear, and without blemishes. Thus the comparison. Nama 130, Shatodari. She has a thin waist. 
Namas 129 and 130 are connected to her Kamakala form, the details of which will be discussed in Nama 322, Kamakala Rupa. So Kamakala is a very deep understanding, which we're not going to go into here. We, we will in the context when we come to Nama 322. Nama 131, Shantimati. She is never harsh to her devotees. She tolerates certain acts of her devotees that are considered inappropriate. Shanti means peace. She appears peaceful and tolerates certain acts of her devotees, but she too has a tolerance level. Once that level is crossed by her devotees, she does not hesitate to initiate corrective measures. The corrective measures are carried out through her ministers, like Ashvarudha and Varahi Devis. With this Nama, the description of her acts of benediction ends. Namas 132 to 155 discuss her as Nirguna Brahman, or her formless form. Worshipping her as Nirguna, without attributes or qualities, is considered an important aspect of worship, and the result of such worship is described in Namas 156 to 195. It is also interesting to note that the Vach Devis have chosen to discuss her Nirguna worship first, and Saguna worship with attributes later in Namas 196 to 248. So there are different sections in these thousand names, and this is explained here, and what's coming up in the future namas. But the one I want to highlight here, the aspect of her peacefulness, her shanti nature, that she's very tolerant, up to a point. <laughs> you know, like a mother, a mother will tolerate so much misbehavior from her children up to a point, and then she punishes them. Huh? It's for your own good. This hurts me more than it hurts you. <laughs> but she has so much intelligence. She knows when being kind and soft and patient will be good for our developing devotion. And she also knows when, if she does not correct us, it would be bad for us. It would harm our spiritual development. So using her extensions and expansions and different other shaktis, she employs corrective measures. And these are different now from bad karma. Because they come from her then she is giving us just a little tough love. And certainly this acts in the long term for our spiritual benefit. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.